Right. Oh, we can't save now. I do not want to load. Probably should have saved. Oh, well. Not yet. We're going to go all the way down to see. My guess is there's going to be one last, like, rest area. And then they're going to let us save. All crowd in. As we go up to kill the immortal. The throne room waits outside. Yeah. And so does Arden. Acting like he owns the place. It's time to take it all back. Yep. It ends here. Tonight. Maybe. Head for the throne room. But how do you kill an immortal? That's my question. He's been around for thousands of years. Remember how nervous we were in front of King Regis the day we left? Oh, here's the that tutorial room. The last time we were in here. Yeah, they even let me in that day. Feels like forever ago. Well, hmm, not much farther. Well, shall we? Knocked. Yeah, but uh, hold on a sec. Prompto, can I see your photos? Uh, yeah. I just need one to take with me. Oh, yeah. I get it. Um. You can take whichever you like. I have to choose. Gotta take one from our zany adventures. Think of all the places we've been. <laughs> all the shops along the way. Always something new around every corner. I'm looking for a good... I'm thinking back to when we took that. Yeah. I'm trying to find a good group photo. The shot of us in combat might be cool. Yeah, there isn't a good, like, combat photo. Ah, you know what? I'm gonna be the stereotypical one, like most people. I'll take the shot of them in front of the car. I can't beat that. A shot of all four of us together. And through it all, we had each other. And the car. The then it's settled. That's the one? No backsies? No backsies. Yeah. <sighs> what is that? Oh, now that's just sick. The Emperor, the King, I'm afraid Luna, and I guess Ravis. The throne brings you here. <laughs> it seats only one. Oh no, is that Nyx? Off my chair, Jester. I'm trying to see who the last body is. I wished you were a good guy in the beginning. The dreams of the blood royal come to an end. Spite's all that's kept him going. Huh. Talk about a grudge. Arden sits the throne. <laughs> Not for long. This is my ascension. Haha, <laughs> because that's what we've been doing the entire game. Uh, they did. What did you do? They have no place in this. The battle of kings. Come, Noctis. 
That gameplay commence so that I can look at people. I have to. That's our, that's Nyx. I thought he turned to dust and flew away. Then again, all the bodies are here, and the Emperor dude did turn into a demon. So it's possible that... Yes, I know. Yeah, because the Emperor dude turned into a demon, right? So... As morbid as this is... Gonna have to take a picture. <laughs> Let's look at Noctis' photos, if there's any to really delete... Yes, I only need... I have to take a picture of this. This is a very disturbing scene. But I'm coming, I'm coming. Yeah, it's just like... I thought he turned to dust and flew away in the wind. Let me... Now you have to walk up the actual stairs. Ah, uh, yep, they were illusions. Good thing I took a picture already. It ends now. All the death, all the people, all the things. And no item says so. The once helpless and hapless prince. Is he now ready to claim his crown? Don't let us down. I'm just going to equip my normal sword in place of the Lucii. So you are the chosen king, but you are a second choice at best. One step More like for the royal bloodline. Man, you're one insane dude. Ow! Well, considering I don't even know what's happening, I mean, what, what was happening? Oh! <laughs> the Titan's here to squash you, Arden. But I don't even know what happened those ten years. But all that's... All that's I know. No, not the temple. Or, not the, the sky tower, whatever. Don't tell me that killed him in one go. Even with the dawn to break now, it will only bring the horrors to light. Ow. Oh, he's over regenerated. Cutscene. Wait, what? A king at last. Yeah. 
This is some Dragon Ball Z bullshit. But yeah! How does he do this? I mean, I get it, he's an immortal man from ages past and power of the demons, but how does he have the power of the similars to the Lucii family? Was there something about the Kale uh Kayams that I missed out on in lore? Are we gonna end this like Lord of the Rings? Again, one of us is gonna be Gandalf on the top of the globe. I stab you. I don't even know what's going on, but it is awesome. Now, if only this were animated and they act like that. If this were animated in the style of the movie, that would be stinking awesome. But a question I must have is, how did he know of Nyx's importance from the movie? Considering that Nyx wasn't all that important to him in the grand scheme of things. Like, he did a lot, but... Not sure if the Chancellor would know who he is by sight and name. Of attrition, then. Oh, hey, call back to the movie that wasn't there and through the entire game. Clappy, clappy, Kings clappy. Of yore are on hand, calling you forth to oblivion. <sighs> Yet when your father died, you. Playing with your friends. When your beloved died, you lay watching, powerless to stop it. You think ten years is a long time? It is nothing to me. I have lived in darkness for ages. It's time for you to exit that darkness. What are you gonna crawl? All, all the weapons of the Kings of yore. As he tries to bring up his own weapons. That is how you would end it. Question. He is immortal. How he die? What will you do? Banish the demons and bring peace? Erase me from history once more. This time, you can rest in peace. Close your eyes forevermore. I will await you in the beyond. Isn't that how this all started? He was denied going to the beyond. It's just like, ah, oh, no, you're too evil to come over here. And then he's just like, fine, that'll just plunge the world into darkness. I mean, come on. What the heck? What, what, what do I? He was an immortal. So you just go beat the immortal hard enough, he dies. And even though he's denied passage into the beyond, he's just like, okay, yeah, you can go rest in peace now. What? Okay. Ending cutscene. Ending cutscene. Ending cutscene start now. Yes.
So this is farewell. Pronto. Gladio. Ignis. I leave it to you. Walk tall. My friends. Godspeed. And take care. Just did. Super cutscene. Oh no, the animus is glitching out. Dad. The time we had together. I cherish. Kings of Lucis. Come to me! Now they're all going to stab him? Jesus. I guess that's his father's apparition. Basically, this is the reverse of what happened with Arthas.
And there's Arden. What, one final battle in the beyond? I guess he's finally getting cured of his darkness, maybe. He just got cut to ribbons. And... And then Noct got nixed. <laughs> you fool! Okay, ready? Aww. Steady. Finally. Whoosh! We already went through this. So heavy. Unbelievable. Not exactly a fairy tale beginning, huh, Prince Noctis? It's definitely a fairy tale ending, though. Cells get carried away. Look, these things happen. Let's just hope this isn't some omen. Gladio, do me a favor. What? Push this thing by yourself. All by myself? You won't even notice if we just let go. Prompto, don't even think about it. Save some breath for pushing. Ignis, come on, time to switch. Nah, -uh, we just switched back there. And? Ah. Gladius Amicitia, Ignis Scientia, Prompto Argentum, Regis Lucius Calum, Lunafreya, Lunafreya Nox Flore, Noctis Lucius Calum, Lunafreya, Lunafreya Nox Floret, Corleonis, Iris Amicitia, Aranea Highwind, Tit Titius Dretus, or whatever, Sydney, Sydney. Sydney, Cindy, Arum, Sid Sophoe, Jared Hester, Talcott Hester, Talcott Hester Team, Gintiana, Biggs Calix, Wedge Kincaid. <laughs> I just like doing that, but I guess I shall give my thoughts on this game. I really liked it. There are certain problems I had with it, like, basically... Everything between chapter 9 and the very end, like I'm talking Ifrit to Arden, is like, from chapter 9, everything between chapter 9 and then the Ifrit battle was so rushed and just like, mmm, it could have been so much better. And I will say though, I like how they're using photos from your photo album to be the ending, which now I understand why there was a limit to the photos you had, because they had to have 150 photos for the for the ending. <laughs> but the gameplay was wonderful, the story was wonderful, the movie was wonderful, the characters are wonderful, but the pacing was so bad! <laughs> This game needed to have like five or even ten extra chapters. Also reused uh, dialogue. And just milking the license of this music they got.
But yeah. This game really needed five to ten more actual story chapters. Like, I feel like certain things were kind of, like, just so rushed. Like, chapters one to... Chapters one to nine. Or I should say one to eight. All feel, like, so underwhelming. Then nine hit, which was jam-packed with story, jam-packed with awesomeness, and then it all went down with ten. And then, for some reason, they made the stupid decision of making the Empire completely and utterly worthless. And I mean it, completely and utterly worthless. What did the Empire do? The stuff in the movie, and that's it. The Empire did the stuff in the movie, had Arden, had Ravis, that was it. Because, and the, like, basically, the Empire feels just like the one mission where we had to go and kidnap the, like, base commander. And then the base commander just escaped off screen. Like, uh, ten minutes, like, not even, like, five minutes, we catch him, capture him, five minutes later, he's gone. That, that is what the Empire was to me. It's just like, hello, we're here, throw robots at you. But then there was no payoff to the Empire. Like, I kind of get it. It's just like, oh, no, the uh, catharsis of avenging your father and stuff. Oh. The four of us around a campfire. How long's it been? Hmm. An eternity. Post credit sequence. I, um, out with it. I'm going to die. Already died. I just... Get on with it! Damn it. What the hell is this so hard? This is it. And seeing you here now. Like, is he already dead? Is this a flashback? What he's these times confused. It's more than I can take. Damn right it is. Huh. You spit it out. That's good to hear. Well, what can I say? Do you guys look the best? Heartwarming, but 
<laughs> is that like in the afterlife? Was that a past thingy? Oh well, cool music to go out onto the next sequence. But like I was saying, this game really needed like five to ten more chapters. <laughs> it, it just like, and also five to ten more chapters, and make the empire a threat. They locked down Disgaea. They did the stuff in the movie, and that's basically it. Oh yeah, they they failed at killing Shiva. They literally did nothing but kill the king, destroy Insomnia, and take off of the crystal, and that was basically the end of the Empire's involvement. Like, and even then it was just like, when Aranea first showed up, I was just like, yes, this is gonna be super awesome. It's gonna be like, this is gonna be one of the martial, like, generals of the Empire that we get to kill. I was just like, nope. You fight her once, and the next time you meet her, it's just like, oh, yeah, I'm just a mercenary, and the next time you meet me, I'm gonna be a good guy. And then when you actually get to the closest thing to Niflheim and the Empire, there's only demons, because, oh, everybody disappeared. Like, it would have been so much cooler if you went through the ship fighting off soldiers, generals, like, maybe people in mechs, like, people, like, whatever happened to the general dude that handed over the army reins to Ravis? Like, fight him, fight the, and what if you were, like, fighting the emperor, and the emperor was just like, I'll kill you myself, and all these people are like, no, you can't, emperor, we'll do it for you, and then, after you beat the emperor, he starts to turn into a demon, so he retreats thinking, ah, I'm too wounded. And then the further you get in after that, more and more things are happening. Like, what's going on? And demons are everywhere. Just make it epic. No, you made it lame. It's just like certain little decisions just tarnish this game. And so we had a cutscene, post-credit sequence. More, uh, no, credits, post-credit sequence. A second credits, a second post-credit sequence. <laughs> But yeah, it's just like, there was no, there was catharsis against Arden. That was really good. And there was closure with Ravis, I, Ravis, I think. But there was no closure to the Empire as a whole. You know, I wanted to see, I wanted to see the Empire release the giant demons. And you're like going through a Niflheim-like city, trying to get to the main throne of power and like you're fighting off Niflheim soldiers and they're controlled demons and they release the giant city destroying demons you have to dodge like falling skyscrapers and then you get to the ship and you're fighting more soldiers and demons then like I said fight the emperor he uh, retreats turning into a demon thinking he's just injured and then things slowly go downhill from there and then you fight demon and burn things like oh people are turning into demons it's just like it would have been cool what are you saying no Still doesn't make sense. Like, I get the symbolism there. I was like, that's where they were. It's like, are they dead? Like, I know Noctis is dead. But is Ignis and the others dead? <laughs> Dearest Lorna. Umbra. I look so pretty on the wedding day. You did well to, to deliver the ring to Noctis. Ah, old timey Final Fantasy music. Wayward, though my son may indeed be. He has made me proud. May you too know happiness. Ha! <laughs> Yeah, I like that one. The beginning of the adventure. What? I guess they're in the afterlife. Ah, 
I mean... Might as well at that point. You're both dead, you both died for the world. Might as very well spend the rest of eternity together. And now he's just gonna... Rule over future... Heaven. Or something. Symbolism! Ah! <laughs> That's good. Still don't buy their romance at all. Don't buy their romance at all. But nice heartfelt finish. Don't buy the romance at all. It was still a good ending. <laughs> Snow. Congratulations on completing the game. If you're a certificate of completion from the archives, then share this record of your success with all your friends. That's what I'm doing with this recording. <laughs> Finished at level 75 with 51 hours under my belt. Uh, and this just allows you to go through all of the photos. <laughs> 151 photos. So it's basically demanding me to delete one. <laughs> Is that what it's doing? Is it demanding me to <laughs> delete one? <laughs> Save the completion data. Load this file to begin... And play outside the citadel. You can also return to the past and explore Ru Lucius. Yes. <laughs> it's like for a moment, it's just like, are you demanding that I stop here? <laughs> but yeah, the Empire should have been much a much bigger threat. The Empire should have had more importance and be a bigger threat, but weren't allowed to be. But what else is there? I hate, 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 hate how they have a danger system instead of a normal health system. To me, that just felt like the programmer and designer safety net. Oh, a new opening? That's actually pretty cool. If that is. Yep, and it's a new thing. That's cool. So I guess, go ahead... And let this be, like, the final thing. Maybe loop the credits or something, but... I hate how they have a danger system. Instead of a normal health system. Basically, the system where your health drops to zero, then you enter the danger state, and then you can just heal yourself back up. Which then, it's just like, oh, there's no tension, so we have to throw in insta-death attacks. Which is what the safety bit was there to prevent, even though I thought the danger system was there to prevent that. At that point, you should have just scrapped the danger system and put in a normal health system. Where you have to con- But I understand why they did it, but I just felt it's kind of lazy. I say this because instead of making it so it's just, like, easy to tell when your allies are getting damaged, or when you're getting damaged, you have to constantly flick your eye to the bottom right corner just to see, like, oh, that's what's going on. To the point where it's just like, oh, Prompto's dead. Oh, Prompto's dead. Ignis is down. I didn't know this, except for the occasional call from Gladio. It's just like, hey, Prompto doesn't look so good. And, but I just feel like the game would have been so much better if they just went and had a normal health system. That way, battles could feel more epic instead of, Oh, I got knocked down. Better pick myself up with an energy drink. <sighs> but, and then, they kind of, it's kind of annoying how you have the, which is just annoying because the insta-death attacks were bullshit. I basically been, went from half to full health down to dead. And it's just like, come on. I expect to be instant killed from something that's twice my level, or like 10 or something at levels higher than me. But instead, they just decide to throw in a few enemies with instant death capabilities. Like, the bomb, I kinda understand. It's a bomb! It's a b bomb! And then the weird whiplash, mustache, cheetah thing. That was still stupid. And then, 
I don't even know what killed me when I was fine fighting an Iron Giant and a Ronin. I just don't know. Another thing, I wish there was more enemy variety. Like, I wish there was, like, dozens of different demons, but oftentimes they just kept coming back to the same demons over and over again. Ooh, the saga, like, the saga, the, the naga-like creatures, the iron giants, and the variation, the fire giants, and then the little gremlin creatures. It's just like, I wish they were, like, I'm pretty sure they did have more demon types that they just didn't use all that much. Like, I understand, I'll, I understand why not, because they had to, if they did have more enemies, they would have to model them, texture them, program their AI, balance them in the difficulty and everything. Which, actually, speaking of difficulty, the leveling system is borked to high hell! You can easily go and break the system by just saving up your experience and turning it in at either Golden Key or Altissa. That just breaks it for me because instead of a steady progression, that makes it so fluctuate. Like it makes it fluctuate so much to the point where the main story missions went from level thirty odd enemies to level seventy two. And even then, level 72, level 40, level 60, level 80. It was all over the place in the final area. And then they got around it a bit by just like, with the boss battles, just like, oh, question mark, question mark, question mark, which was more than likely tailor-made to work at any level. It, I really would have liked it if they had a, if they got rid of the sleeping mechanic. If instead you gained experience normally. Like, you kill an enemy, that experience goes to you, instead of being forced to rest at stops. I understand why they did that for a multitude of reasons as well. That way they can, uh, that way they encourage you to stop by camps so that you get status boosting meals, as well as, uh, tally up your photos. I, could, I think that you could have gotten around that much easier, as, and even then, even if it risked breaking the... Uh, mechanic for the end where your photos happen in the credit sequence I don't I really wouldn't care if there was a if that meant having a better leveling curve because that just it, it didn't encourage me to go like encourage me at first but then after that I got into the mindset just break the game just break the game just go and get super boosts another thing is I think it has ridiculous uh, expectations for AP placement. Like, I get it. Some of those things are ridiculously powerful, but... Again, if the leveling curve was better, and the number of AP required per thing was better, they could have made it where it was just like, having this would be really helpful in this final battle. And actually, speaking of the final battle... Why in the world did I kept did I keep getting the lightning dude when I got to summon a deity? Because I only got to see Bahamut in a cutscene and Shiva in a cutscene and then Titan, which I'm pretty sure that would be Titan's normal deedly do if he was like summoned in a normal battle, but the combat of this game doesn't lend itself to summon because it's very vague and you have to be like, oh, the music changed, hold R2. It's just kind of annoying, really, where it's, it would be like, why in the world can't I just go and like, there, like add a, add a third meter or something, have it be a, a desperation attack or something. Gods, lend me your strength or another bar. Because you already have two bars, the tech bar and then the armiger. And actually, speaking of the armiger, the armiger was, is... I underutilized it so much because I both kept forgetting about it and it didn't really add all that much. If anything, the armiger should have been what you use twice in the game. The fly around and fire, like, uh, fire your weapons of the kings of future past... And like it's stinking Dragon Ball Z for like 10 seconds. That would have been awesome. And just like make it so that it's harder to get. That would have been amazing. But uh, he has to earn it and become a king. It's just like, it's, but it's not 
fun. Fun. This is a video game. This is a video game and a storytelling, a really story-driven video game at that. It is most definitely not the best game in the world. And I haven't even played other Final Fantasy games, and I can probably say that this doesn't stack up all too well against other Final Fantasy games as well. The gameplay probably stacks up really well against other uh, Final Fantasy games, but not the story. I'm only comparing it to a few RPGs that I've actually played, like Tales of Symphonia, the only other RPG I've played I can't remember, like, and I mean like actual RPG RPG, like Pokemon, uh, I wouldn't count on Pokemon, but even then I feel like Pokemon had better, st like, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon would have better, st had better stories than this. This is far more grand, but the pacing issues, the certain questions, the uh, destiny stuff, and then last minute humanization. Like again, speaking of the humanization thing, let me talk about Ravis. Screw that. In the movie, he came in, I am the king, give me your power, and his arm got burned off. And I was like, oh, that guy's dead. Nope, he appears in the game. Like, okay. And Apparently getting your arm burned off by the king god people makes you into an anti-hero? Or something? Like, what? No. There are so many little problems that I have with this game that all combine against it. The gameplay is clunky. It's really clunky. Like, it's hold down the attack button and then move the control stick in different directions for different combos, but I never really got the grasp of that system. I really would have liked a system that's like, press the attack button and like have more control. Like, I kept trying to play this like Dark Souls. <laughs> and I kept trying to attack and then dodge, attack and then dodge, but of due to the weapons I was using and the attack animations and the holding down the button and combo stuff, it just kept getting in the way. Honestly, this game isn't, like, it's not bad, but I wouldn't even say it's great. I've seen better stories and the combat is okay, but I just feel like third person uh, action combat systems have been done better, but I understand why this one is the way it is. Like, Assassin's Creed or Batman's, uh, combat systems wouldn't work for this game. Not at all. But I wish it was somewhat closer to that, just so I would have more control. More control over the targets I attacked, more control over the camera because sometimes the camera's just so terrible against the giant bird creature again basically against any giant creature that you're trying to get real up close to attack was just a terrible experience all around oh screw this time skip the time skip doesn't build all that much it really doesn't all it serves to do is to try and con in this feeling of Oh, so much time has passed. How the characters have changed when really nothing changed. Change Teen Talkit to... Change Teen Talkit to a different character and just have it be 10 days later and you basically get the same result. Minus the beards. Like, you can even explain away that in those 10 days, Ignis felt like he uh, was the reason... Everything went to crap because he wasn't good enough, he didn't protect his friends, so he trained and trained and trained so hard that he got super good in those 10 days to be able to be normal again, even though he's blind, because that's one of probably one of the reasons they had a time skip. How can we explain Agnes no longer being hampered by his blindness? It's just like, don't. Just say that over this time period he is, feels comfortable again, and I wouldn't question it. Because just like saying, oh, it's post-apocalyptic, oh, all these characters have changed, we didn't get to see it. 
if the post-apocalyptic 10 years later future was expanded upon, if we were actually allowed to go around that world and go to Lestalem, see how these characters have changed instead of just like, ah, oh, yeah, Iris is like a demon slayer now, and Sid, oh, he had to leave the garage. And then there are some characters that we just, I don't know what happened to them. What happened to the Marshal? What happened to a lot of these people? And just like, and then they put in these small little things like, uh, the, oh, you can do gardening, and you can do gardening and get all these rewards, but at that point, you've done all, like, at least for me, by that point, I've already done a whole bunch of side quests, and I wanted to continue the story, so I had no real reason to stay there and, like, check back on the farm and get more weapons and stuff, because I'm like, I'm gonna go head straight for chapter 9 now, and that's where everything kicked off. In which I would say that's also the point where we really needed five to ten more chapters. I get it. This game was in development for ten years, had many, many, many millions of dollars probably thrown at it. And they probably didn't want to throw too much more at it just because of how much has already been thrown at it. But come on. It could have been so much better. If instead of the cop-out, oh, yeah, the Empire's just, like, gone now. The cop-out, oh, yeah, all the characters have changed now. Because, like, the opening thing, the opening thing where your character, where Noctis, Prompto, Ignis, and Gladio were getting ready to face off against a giant fire demon that I didn't know was Ifrit back then, I thought this game was literally going to play over the years towards that point in game. We got a shitty time skip, and that's just lame. Everything from chapter one to chapter eight is fine. I felt like that was build up. Like, I've basically, that's why I think that the game needed more chapters, more story time, was because to me, chapters one through eight was act one. That was Act 1, and then Chapter 9 tried to be Act 2 all within itself. And, no, well, the beginning of Act 2 all within itself. It acted as the ending of Act 1, as well as the beginning and a hefty chunk of Act 2 all by itself. And then Chapters... And then somewhere in Chapter 10, 11, 13, the Act uh, 2 ended... And then Act 3 started up after the time skip ended. It just felt like Act 1 was so long, and all the important stuff, Act 2, Act 3, was rushed. Act 1, super duper long, Act 2, non-existent, and the ending was really, like, yeah. That's probably the best way to put it. Act 1 was good. The beginning of Act 2 in Chapter 9 was wonderful, Everything else sucked up until the battle with Ifrit and Arden. That is what I'm gonna say. Also still don't understand, like, certain things. Like, what's the extent of Arden's power? He expresses... He, he gives off the power of being able to mess with people's minds. Like, what he did with Noctis in chapter... What? No, probably chapter 11. In which he gets him to attack Prompto and then knock him off a train? Why doesn't he, like, how and why? That's just a very weird thing. I guess it gives off the Jafar thing where he might have been doing that to the Emperor, but because we never got to meet the Emperor, like, literally, I think the Emperor had, like, two lines in the game. He was a main character in the movie. A lot of these things happen in the movie that are just, ah. The movie, in my opinion, was much better put together because it was it's self-contained, but also lift off. But like, yeah, what happened to Liberta? Like the the dude from the movie. Like Nyx, I expected Nyx to die. But like maybe there'll be a reference to Nyx in the game, and there technically is. Hello, hi, hello, hanging corpse. <laughs> but the movie showed much better action, much better awesomeness and stuff. And honestly, 
killed a boss in the movie. Overall, Final Fantasy XV is fine. It's a good game, but the story feels rushed. The gameplay feels a little unpolished and kind of lazy in design. And, oh yeah, that's another thing. I really don't like how there's a lack of armor and weaponry. Like, I think there might be a total of 10 weapons per item class? Or, uh, 10 items per weapon class. None of them really do all that much. It's just like, oh, hey, like, even in games where it's just go to the next town, buy the next town's armor and weapons, I just kind of like that feel. Whereas in this game, you literally have the choice between two outfits with me having the suit because I got the, uh, the definitive edition, I think it is, or something like that, came with the movie. And then you, the only time the game gives you more armor is in the final chapter. I wish, like, they could have had more armor, but I get it again. They would have to design, model, texture, and program in more, uh, more models and stuff to do that with armor. And same thing with, uh, weapons, they would have to balance a whole bunch of stuff, but... And considering that a, a, literally a third of the game takes place on a continent that you can basically go anywhere. Yeah, basically after you get out of um, the Dust Bowl, I forget what it's called, I'm a stupid. But after you get out of there, you literally can go anywhere and get the best weapon. If you really, re best weapons on that place if you really, really wanted to. Unless there's a specific, oh, this weapon doesn't become viable until this point. It's an RPG! You're supposed to have weapons and armors galore. But not in this one. And also, it, also the weapon system is kind of barked in itself, where, where basically, you will find two weapons you really like to use, and then magic, and that's it. Oh! And also, the Ring of the Lucia is a terrible weapon. After the designated sequence of which you use the Ring of the Lucia, I highly doubt you'll ever use that again in combat. Like, you can use it as an emergency heal, but it doesn't go off of enemy health. It does this weird distortion thing where it crumples up their body and makes them disappear, and then you get the health. It would have been a cool combo if you knock them down to low health and then use the Ring of the Lucii to kill, finish them off and then heal yourself with them. And also, the super duper big bang attack of just suck them into the void is useless because half of the time it didn't work after the designated sequences. And again, random, for no reason, stealth sections when this game has no stealth mechanics whatsoever. Like, if the stealth mechanics were uh, expanded upon, it would have been wonderful. Like, you can get an instant kill or hyper, hyper, super damage on one enemy by initiating uh, combat with a stealth warp strike. That would have been amazing. But really, all this game did... Like, I feel like if this wasn't like going to become the norm for Final Fantasy, but then again, I don't know what the norm for Final Fantasy is anymore. So who knows, maybe Final Fantasy doesn't have all that much armor stuff over all this period of time. It really has been just trinkets and accessories being the armor for the games uh, for a while now. Maybe the lack of weaponry has been a thing in Final Fantasy for a while now. And maybe even the combat has been a thing uh, in Final Fantasy for a while now, but... This just makes me worried for Final Fantasy VII Remake. Because the combat isn't the best, and I just don't think it would fit anything without the Warp Strike. The Warp Strike is really, really good and helps a lot because you're able to get out of combat really quickly to specified areas to heal yourself without using an item and regain mana and stamina and stuff. Oh, and also that's another thing. Really disappointed that mana wasn't used for, like, actual magic and stuff. It's just, like, a different stamina. Which, I guess you could argue is, in most part. But I really would have been cool if there was, like, more to magic casting than what there was. But I understand because of what the game is going for in terms of combat. Another thing is, 
I feel like the world was underplayed. Characters that weren't the main four were underplayed and completely nonsensical. The movie feels like it's been ignored, even though they included scenes from it as a very vague, oh no, this is happening early on in the game. The Empire was highly underutilized. Luna and Ravas got late game, oh no, they were actually human all along, stupid bullshit. Like, Ravis was a jerk in the movie and a jerk through most of the game. And basically, I I call Bull Honky. He had a good boss fight, but that's it. And Luna is just like, Miss Destiny herself. Like, oh no, I just really, I did love him. I just want to stand by him. It's just like, then why'd you talk like a robot, act like a robot, and act just like a puppet of the gods for all this time? You monotone freak. And again, the a post-apocalyptic 10 years later thing was stupid and was a cheap tactic to elevate the game to higher standard, like higher place. Oh, the stakes are risen now. You didn't earn that at all, game. Five to 10 more chapters, then you might've earned it. I will play this game more, yeah, off screen, and will only record bonus stuff occasionally later on if it's like something big, like the level 99 turtle and I'll probably be playing New Game Plus on my own. For 10 years of development and all the hype, I expected more. I expected a little bit more polish and much better storytelling. For what the story, what the storytelling did right was really good. What the storytelling did wrong was just Shyamalan. Like, it felt like it was trying to pull the rug out from under you instead of actually just telling a good story, like, aha, Arden Izunia is actually Kaelum, Kaelum, whatever. He's actually part of the family. It's like, I don't even get what the, you'll never guess who Izunia actually was. Like, no, he won't, because this wasn't alluded to. I didn't hear any legends, didn't see any books to read that mentioned this ancient demon healer that was denied access to heaven or whatever bullcrap there was. The closest thing was, Oh, the hunters called me a witch and banished me to the woods. But then, that's only parallels. This was never referenced, and then Arden's just like, Ah, surprise, I'm an immortal dude, and I'm gonna banish you to the crystal, and then ten years later, and then that's stupid. Foreshadowing. Plant the seeds and make us go, Aha, that's what that was about. Don't just exposition dump in the next to last chapter. Yeah, the storytelling could really have used an overhaul, but the probably the reason they did that was be like really, they could have sacrificed like a few stupid little things. They call certain things chapters in the overall plotting of the game, but I just don't think that a lot of them deserve to be all that epic. Like, a lot of stuff happened off-screen. Luna was doing stuff off-screen. Jared died off-screen. The characters progressed ten years off-screen. And it's just annoying to me that they couldn't have dedicated some of that off-screen time to actually let the player see. Because this would have been super-duper cool if it was talked about in the past, if it was... Uh, alluded to in the past if it was foreshadowed if it was alluded to if there was something that indicated something or other that was basically everything that happened after chapter 10 if it was alluded to before chapter 10 I would probably be okay with it but they didn't allude to it they dumped it on you you don't hear reports on the radio or reports from a base that you wiped out of, hey, weird things are going back on home in Niflheim. People are disappearing. You didn't read that. You don't hear that. You just run across these reports that you probably should have ran across hours before, before you even went to Tenebrae. They're just exposition dumps. It's just stupid. It's just annoying. It's just lame. It's just lazy. The parts that are good are really, really good. But the parts that I have, 
annoyances with and anger with and problems with are really, really big button pressures to me. Because, like, when it comes to stuff like this, like, gameplay can save a faltering story, and a good story can save faltering gameplay. But an RPG, a JRPG at that, a Final Fantasy JRPG at that, I expect to have good gameplay and a good story. And the gameplay is good, and the story is good, but they aren't all the time, and you can't expect gameplay and story to be good all the time. But it just felt like there was an entire, like, I guess that's my main problem with the story. Chapters 1 through 8 felt like build-up. And I expected more. And I didn't get more. And they shoved what should have been in those chapters that don't exist. And also, yeah, and also the back-to-back back god-getting. Like, you get Titan's favor, and then you go get Rama's favor. Like, the next chapter, that's annoying to me. The pacing is the worst. That's probably my biggest gripe with the game. The insta-deaths are fine, they were few in number. The tower is still evil, the tower is evil and needs to burn down to the ground. But the worst thing of all will be the pacing. It was a slow burn for most of the opening, the first eight chapters. Then it went super hard in chapter nine. Then it went back to being a slow burn uh, across chapters 10 to 13. Well, chapters 10 to 12 and then 13 kind of kicked it up a notch. But the slow burns, that's basically what it feels like. The slow burns felt like big build up to something. And while the payoff was good, the payoff didn't pay to the extent that I felt it should have. Again, there should have been more Empire. Th that's the, my biggest story gripe aside from the pacing. The Empire was severely underplayed. Luna was okay for what she is and what she did. She served her purpose and she was a decent enough character that I'm not angry that they fell in love, but I'm just like, I don't see it. It's stupid, but hey, it's a, it's a video game. It's a Final Fantasy game. There's always going to be a little stupid in Final Fantasy games, and that's fine. I can't excuse the complete mistreatment of the Empire. They didn't feel like a threat. They didn't do much, and when they did, they sucked at it. And then they just all turned into demons, and... The Emperor didn't... F that is the worst thing. The Emperor was a horrid, horrid, horrid waste. The Emperor should have been a big... Basically, the Emperor should have been a mini Arden battle. The Emperor should have been a big, climactic thing. There's just like, oh, but that's not the end. Surprise, more's happening. But they didn't do that. That, yeah, that, that, that would have just been so good if the Emperor, you built up there, you'll pay for what you did, Emperor, and you're still confused, like, what's Arden doing? Like, Arden could, like, is Arden the puppet master, or is he a puppet uh, dancing for the Emperor? But we don't know, we don't know. But, but then we did know, and then it sucked, and it's like, sad. But, at the end of the day, Final Fantasy XV, good game. Glad I played it. Just wish, just wish that they fixed those little, little wiggling problems. But I guess after 10 years of development, they were a little eager to get it out, and maybe they mixed fast paced, uh, oh my god, this is awesomeness with just rushed exposition. Though, I have heard that they are going to release a patch that will fix some pacing issues or something. The spirit will still be there, and, but they'll fix up certain things, and I'll definitely keep an eye on that. I will definitely keep an eye on that, because if they can fix that, I'll be super duper happy. And, but let's see. I guess to end off, I'll say, 
I'll also, this series isn't over yet, if you're still listening. Like, one viewer, hello, how are you today? You're beautiful. But the series isn't over, even though this is the final episode, because DLC. Diddly dang DLC. Diddly dang DLC by the name of uh, Individual Stories. Well, we have Gladio's story, Ignis's story, and Prompto's story. Which I dub Gladio while he's with Gladio, whatever Gladio is doing while we were at Vesperpool. I have no idea uh, what Ignis's story will be. It'll probably be the Ignis is off doing things in Altissa and then gets blinded. And then Prompto discovers that he's actually a Magitek soldier. Or whatever the fuck that plot twist was. I hate that plot twist. It's one of those, I discovered this thing off screen and it's a big story changing thing that's completely downplayed, probably because they're saving all the dramatic stuff for the DLC. Actually, that's the perfect thing. They haven't finished this game. DLC is still company coming, so screw you. Your story has terrible, terrible flaws and you didn't fix them. You could have been like, Guys, we want to fix up the story, maybe add in a chapter or two more, and like, fine, we have some DLC to finish up anyway that we can stagger release. And it's just like, I wouldn't have mind that. I wouldn't have mind that. Maybe. Maybe. Like, because with this type of game where it's like you play Noctis throughout the entire thing, to suddenly play Gladio would have broken up the pacing... To pl suddenly play Ignis or Prompto would have broken up the pacing, and to play it after you've already beaten the game will add cool little perspectives. It's just like a cool little thing to go to afterwards. So again, I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Good game, good story, good world, good characters, but... A lot of it has flaws. A lot of it has flaws that stick out to me and just, like, are always at the forefront of my mind. But it's not enough to make it a bad game. Because, hey, the good outweighs the bad. I just wish... That's probably the best way to put it. I wish it was... I point out all this bad stuff, and I hate all this bad stuff, because I like what's so... What it, what, I like what's good so much. I like what's good in the game so much that I wish it was better by squashing these small or even kind of big problems. Even the big problem of pacing, empire, exposition dumping, chapters 10 to 13 aren't enough to make me hate anything, but are enough to put a damper on a... are enough to put a damper on a game and tip over the iceberg a bit of all these little problems that I experienced before weren't enough to I would have aren't enough I would have called this a great game like super duper great classic game this doesn't feel like it's a classic to me this is going to be one of those yeah that's a good game but it's not a super duper awesome good game i'm just trying to think of what <laughs> that w what it would be classified as. I'm trying to compare it to games. Like, I don't think this is, will ever be this specific game. I don't think it's going to reach the notoriety of other games. Like, it's not going to be as, like, remembered as other games, I'd say. I don't know why. I mean, it might, but... This is my what I. It doesn't feel like it's gonna be remembered all that much. It's definitely gonna be one of those games where it's like, hey, yeah, remember that game? Yeah, I remember playing that. And I feel like a whole lot more people have played this one than say other Final Fantasy games. But this is just going to be another Final Fantasy game. In the end, it's gonna be another eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It's gonna just be another Final Fantasy game that people might know the protagonist from. People might know certain things from it. 
but it's not going to be remembered as much as 6 or 7. And if they ironed out the some gameplay problems and the story problems, made the Empire more of a threat only to be toppled by yourself and the demons and then be revealed, oh, a bigger evil lies beyond, this might have been tipped over to almost 7 and 6 levels. But I wouldn't go as far as... I, nah, I probably won't go as far as that. That's just speculation, but... What's There is a good game that I recommend playing that I just wish was better. I wish they took a few more years to iron out, a few more million dollars thrown at this game, because I get it, 10 years of development, they want to get it out, but the problems there I feel they should have fixed. In the end, good game, good characters, good gameplay, just wish it could, just wish it could have been better. I've been Neon Ice Wings, and this has been Final Fantasy XV. And I guess when I do the level 99 tortoise shell fighty dee dee dee, I'll make another video when the DLC gets staggered release, I'll make more videos about it. But, as it stands now, it's finished. I've been Neon Ice Wings. This has been a good, good game by the name of Final Fantasy XV. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.